Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Trump's TikTok flip-flop. Exactly what TikTok gets from the people that use the platform. And we're going to be looking at some charts where these politicians have been buying and selling. Uh, it's just one company. It's important because I know a lot of people that are invested in this company. And I'm not going to be able to name names. But you'll get You'll you'll pick up what I'm putting down, I'm pretty sure. So this is a letdown, guys. Just heads up. Trump just sold out bizarre TikTok flip flop, followed by meeting with hedge fund manager who has 30 billion invested. Now Biden says he will gladly sign it because Congress passed it uh, bipartisan, blah blah blah. That Biden saying he'll sign. Well, does he know what he's signing? No, I don't know. There's probably an ice cream reward afterwards. The House Energy and Comment, uh, Commerce Committee unanimously passed a bipartisan bill that would force the sale of TikTok and face a ban in the United States. Trump, however, despite repeatedly pushing for a TikTok ban or sale when he was president, has done a complete 180. And he says, because getting rid of TikTok would benefit Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> All right, man. He says it'll, it'll double their business. I don't like them either. But just so you know, uh, Trump, who recently met with a billionaire fund manager and GOP donor, Jeff Yoss, who has a massive stake in TikTok worth more than $30 billion, uh, Yas has given $10 million to the Congressional Leadership Fund, the House GOP-aligned super PAC this cycle, as well as another $250,000 to Joint Leadership Fund Speaker Mike Johnson. Now, I'm going to let you listen to Trump right after we cover what TikTok actually gets. What TikTok knows about you. TikTok knows the device you're using, your location, IP address, search history, the content of your messages. In the U.S., TikTok can collect biometric information, including face and voice prints. Welcome to the Thunderdome. TikTok says it collects text, images, and video from your device's clipboard if you copy and paste content to or from the app or share it with third-party platform. The question is, what aren't they telling us? What, what else are they getting? TikTok is not being specific about which data is going where. You have to assume it could be anything. This could potentially include your profile information, content you create even if you don't share it with TikTok, the contents of your clipboard, and this is a big one, typing patterns, key strokes. The CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, is getting that. Mull on that for a little bit. Now, this is why the bill passed uh, 50 to 0. And there's a bunch of reasons why they're saying, you know, TikTok's uh, access to 170 million Americans makes it a viable propaganda tool. Well, I agree. I agree with all that. But remember, this is a red flag. And this is the, the main reason. The committee may have been galvanized to act following a massive spam campaign orchestrated by TikTok earlier in the morning. The social media company began targeting users with location-specific information, giving them the contact information of their local representatives on the community and urging them to demand a no vote. That wasn't very popular. And I can see why. Now, back to Trump. Here's Trump, and this is what he says. I could have banned TikTok. I had it banned just about. I could have gotten it done. Uh, but I said, you know what? But I'll leave it up to you. I didn't push them too hard because, you know, let them do their own research and development. And they decided not to do it. But as you know, I was at a, a point where I could have gotten it done if I wanted to. Uh, I sort of said, you guys decide. You make that decision because it's a tough decision to make. Frankly, there are a lot of people on TikTok that love it. There are a lot of young kids on TikTok who who will go crazy without it. There are a lot of uh, users. There's you know a lot of good, and there's a lot of bad with TikTok. 
But the thing I don't like is that without TikTok, you can make Facebook bigger. And I consider Facebook to be an enemy of the people, along with a lot of the media. Okay, that's probably true. But are we concerned about the little kids that are going to get upset? All right, the, the next video is classic blame shifting. And this is Vivek. And I want you to ask yourself, as he's talking about Airbnb and doing the blame shift, would these people that aren't politicians, that are acting exactly like politicians, would they be pro-Airbnb if they had a donor that was involved? to the tune of 30 billion. Flimsy policies along the way. And the President Trump just came out against a legislative measure that would require the owner of TikTok to divest it. It's currently a Chinese owner, a company called ByteDance, or else that it would be banned in the United States. President Trump just came out opposing that. I think that's the right decision, actually, of President Trump to oppose that legislation because it doesn't make any sense. Absolutely. And I've long said this, even late in the campaign, took a lot of heat from fellow Republicans. But I think we have to ask ourselves the why. And this is the problem with professional politicians. President Trump isn't a professional politician and neither am I. But many mm. people in professional politics, they look at what they're supposed to say and they act like billiard balls on a pool table. They go in whatever direction they're hit without thinking about the actual why. It's a problem even in the Republican Party. Let's take a step back and ask about the why of what's going on here. What's the real concern that people have with TikTok? Well, one is it's an addictive problem in kids. It's not just TikTok. That applies to a bunch of other social media platforms as well. And that is an issue we need to tackle, but it's not specific to one platform. I do think there should be age-based restrictions on using right. addictive. I think that is a major concern. But here's the rub. It isn't limited to just shift. TikTok here's or even Chinese-owned companies in the U.S., it expands to include even so-called U.S. companies that are still beholden to the CCP because they do business in China. Here's an example. A couple of years ago, there was Good Wall Street Journal reporting on the fact that Airbnb, a U.S. company, supposedly U.S. company at least, was providing U.S. user data to the CCP as a condition for doing business in China. According to the Wall Street Journal reporting, Sean Joyce, the chief privacy officer of Airbnb, resigned over that because it wasn't properly disclosed to the public. And one of Airbnb's co-founders reportedly told him that we're not here to promote American values behind closed doors. I'm sure he wouldn't say that in public it's when they put a little black is. square on their Instagram account to stand with Black Lives Matter. That virtue signaling aside, this is what they say behind closed doors. It's not just Airbnb though. It applies to countless other US companies as well. So we have to ask ourselves the why. And if the real concern we have, and I think it is a real concern we ought to have, is the provision of U.S. consumer and user data to the Chinese Communist Party, that's what we should be legislating against. Ban U.S. companies from providing U.S. user data to China. I think it's a sensible measure regardless of the company. But it is beyond silly to just pick one random company and go after them because that is temporarily a politically popular thing to do while actually failing to solve the actual problem that applies to Chinese companies and U.S. companies alike, including the U.S. companies that do business. In All right, <clears throat> that's enough. So that was classic, classic, classic blame shifting. And it, it here's the facts. Talk to, TikTok is a data mining app. China, that they report to the CCP. The same people that do human organ harvesting and kill little babies in a five-gallon bucket of water and all the other heinous things they do, uh, you know, slave labor, all of it. Well, let, well, don't look at that. Look over here, because Airbnb did it too. Well, Airbnb didn't put money in your pocket. <laughs> okay? So, oh, man. Guys, hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell if you like this kind of content, because what I'm about to show you might help you. This is uh, one of, so I found it here. Let's see, this one. Okay, this, this red house in Tennessee right here, this red house made 122% in the stock market last year. The stock is ET, energy transfer, okay? They start buying down here, way down here, and they rode it up and they bought along the way, and they just sold not too long ago, back in uh, 
uh, 7, 12, 23, 200 to 500,000. Man, these guys really, they got some big money. They, they know how to trade, don't they? And they sold again 500 to 1 million. 500 grand to a million right here. The house, the red house in Tennessee. Now, if you look over here, there's a red house in Texas. <laughs> 30,000 to 100,000 sold right here. This is something I just want you to look at. Don't ever buy or, or sell or anything because you saw a YouTuber talk about it. But what you can do is take this information that the, all these houses are doing, and it'll help you make decisions in the future. Because uh, if your uh, portfolio grew 123% last year, you might know a thing or two. I'm going to be putting uh, probably one stock in every video, red or blue house, I'll, I'll make the next video blue because they actually do a lot better than the stock market. The problem is they don't they don't tell the, the truth. Well, none of them do really, but they tell enough. We'll know. All right, guys, have an awesome, awesome day. I'll see you in the next one later.